it's Tuesday the 26th of September and a really significant day. Victim survivors hope today's release of the Commission of Inquiry's final report into government responses to child sexual abuse is a turning point. It's been a long time coming. It's been a very long process to get to this point. There have been delays right from the start of the inquiry. So to get to this point where the report's finally going to be tabled is is a big day. I feel optimistic about it and, and uh, you know, I, I guess a little unsure as well. Sam Leishman has been waiting for this day since March 2021, when a commission of inquiry into the Tasmanian government's responses to reports of child sexual abuse in the state's hospitals, schools, out-of-home care and youth detention began its work. In my own personal experience, there's no doubt that that um, people in positions of responsibility knew what was going on or suspected what was going on. In one particular circumstance, I was actually told to deal with the problem myself. It was my problem and I should deal with it, which is a difficult thing for a 12-year-old to, to process. In the years leading up to the establishment of the inquiry, the Tasmanian government and increasingly the public had been hearing reports of abusers operating within public institutions and of warning signs overlooked or ignored. He was able to retain his teacher's registration for, for so long be, to be moved from school to school to school. It's, it's, it's extraordinary that was allowed to happen. There were many examples of institutional failures. Another now notorious case was that of James Jeffrey Griffin, a pedophile nurse working at the Launceston General Hospital who abused multiple children. I was told that Griffin had been on their radar for quite some time but they just needed someone like me to come forward and say so. For nearly 20 years, warnings were raised about Griffin, but it took podcast The Nurse by journalist Camille Bianchi, which was released in October 2020, for Tasmanians to learn the scale of Griffin's offences and the scale of the missed opportunities to stop him. The Tasmanian government is investigating allegations of child sex abuse against a Launceston nurse who died last year. Griffin had been belatedly charged in 2019, but took his own life while on bail. The fallout from the nurse triggered a wave of reporting about perpetrators at other institutions preying on vulnerable children. By November 2020, it had driven then Premier Peter Gutwin to announce the inquiry. This situation is nothing short of terrible and we must take further action. I got a sense then that it was going to be a big deal and it certainly has turned out to be that. Towards meaningful change... Over nine weeks of hearings, 165 witnesses gave evidence and hundreds more spoke to commissioners or gave written statements. By the end of the hearings, 100 people had been referred to police or child protection. Today, victim survivors and their families are gathering at Parliament House in Hobart as the final report is delivered. We thank you for your strength and courage. Our state is deeply indebted to you for your bravery in coming forward. Victim survivors have been abused by the very people who are supposed to care for them. And they were failed by the system that is meant to protect them. It is time for change, time to reflect on some of our most painful moments in Tasmania's history and to build a culture in our institutions that will ensure it is never repeated. We failed you. We are all accountable and we are sorry. The report makes 75 findings, concluding that the Tasmanian government's response to abuse had too often been inadequate and that the commissioners continue to be worried about children in out-of-home care and youth detention. It also makes a total of 191 recommendations, including that Tasmania's Ashley Youth Detention Centre be closed as soon as possible, and the government should outsource the provision of all forms of out-of-home care to the non-government sector. Perpetrators don't care about documents. It's too late once we have been harmed. We live with that every day for the rest of our lives, and it doesn't go away. Um, I'm still grieving for little me and mopping up the mess afterwards. They're much better 
putting that money into stopping it from happening to start with. We've lived through this terrible dark period and I've been a part of it, part of it and a lot of who are here with me today have all been a part of it, but I live with so much hope. I think Tasmania has every opportunity to fix this problem. We can do things so much better. Just a few years ago, the victims of child sexual abuse would have been prevented from standing up and telling their stories by Tasmania's strict gag laws. That law was reformed in no small part due to the advocacy of former Australian of the Year, Grace Tame, and the Let Her Speak campaign. There's still so much work to be done, but it is very important to acknowledge the work that has been achieved through this incredible survivor-led effort. This is at once a closure of this particular effort, but it is the beginning of a reckoning here in Tasmania. The Tasmanian government has committed to implementing every one of the recommendations. Our client's concern is that the report will be handed down, promises will be made and nothing will change. So I think it's very important that the government is held to account and the class action is one of the ways in which that can occur. Angela Sedrinas represents more than 150 former detainees of Tasmania's Ashley Youth Detention Centre in a class action against the Tasmanian government. People who say they were emotionally, physically and sexually abused by staff and other detainees while at Ashley. I would raise Ashley to the ground. I would destroy the physical infrastructure. Here you may find that it's Ashley that's the monster. Regardless of how they were when they went into Ashley, uh, the overwhelming experience of our clients is that they came out of Ashley much more damaged than when they went in. The government has committed to closing Ashley by the end of 2024, but many of those for whom that closure comes too late would like to see the state accept responsibility. We would like to think that the handing down of this report will actually give the government the opportunity to come to us and say, look, let's get to the negotiating table, um, you know, let's minimise cost and delay and let's see if we can resolve these claims. Out of so much pain and suffering, Sam Leishman sees opportunity. There's no reason why Tasmania can't be the best at looking after kids and supporting them and, and making them safe so that other jurisdictions in this country and even the world look to us to see how we've fixed a terrible problem and completely turn it around. I think we can do it.